We are, we are Joe Works. <laughs> DJ Smoot. Megan Smoot. And I am Brandon Ward. Who am I? My name is Charles Frank. Um, lots of people call me Bones. Uh, my name's Carmen. I'm the manager of Little Brother Brewing. I do a lot of the event planning around here, brand marketing, uh, management behind the bar, bartending. I'm pretty much the glue of Little Brother Brewing. What are we trying to accomplish? Uh, Jowork's mission is to create more sustainable communities through better access to clean water, healthy food, relevant education, and equitable job opportunities. I'm trying to utilize music and specifically live music as a way to bring people together, to bring entities together, and to break boundaries and unify a population here, which I believe has really, really needed that for a long time. What I'm trying to accomplish is basically creating that interaction for people to come together over a beer, over music, over art, and that's what I'm trying to accomplish for meeting. When did we start? Uh, I guess technically it all started on our honeymoon back in 2003. We went down to Jamaica and we just fell in love with the people and we met uh, a community organizer at the time who was just passionate and he just sold us on his enthusiasm for the people of Jamaica and we just fell in love with the people then and decided that would be a good time to start. We didn't actually get back with the group to start doing work until about 2009. That was the first time we brought a group down and started actually doing work. But since then we've been going regularly. So. And I was on the trip in 2009 and that's when I first really met Megan and TJ and I hung out with them for like a week or so and we kind of just clicked. Uncle John's Bone, my company, um, which is under my license of CMF Productions, actually began as a vending company in 2015. And we evolved into this production business that we're doing now. I started on Made AM McGee last year with Megan Smooth from Jawworks, Brandon Ward, and TJ Smith. We had a meeting or two just to decide on what we would like to highlight as a group. Um, their nonprofit is something that's really important to me. We wanted to give them a platform to be able to let their nonprofit's message be heard. So we started kind of highlighting different ways that we can connect together. Uh, the community and Little Brother and Jaw Works on the same playing field that we can hopefully just host an awesome event together to be able to foster that social interaction. The night is young and I hope you've got your dancing shoes on. Don't resist the groove, I insist that you bump the move to this Appalachian music. Coming to us from Asheville, North Carolina, please make the noise for Dr. actually sticking with it like a lot of people I think maybe get overwhelmed or don't really know where to go and luckily here in Greensboro they offer some classes and things that offer like taught us how to start a business and where to go for funding and marketing and we're still being friends through all of it I think that's really awesome that's a hard thing for a lot of people to do I'm proud of right now. 
now personally is having a little bit more of a backbone, being able to ask for help, being a little bit more assertive and defined and realizing where my priorities lay. Um, this is both in my personal life and as a manager of a brewery. Uh, there's a lot of different things that come at you, opportunities and events and anything from beer releases to just everyday management of the bar with my bartenders and maintaining that relationship and a good employee culture. So basically, I'm really proud of being able to kind of manage all that and stay sane somehow. <laughs>most proud of. I'm proud of the relationships that I've formed with people. That's obviously an ongoing thing and that's not one isolated event, but I'm proud of the way that I've seen people grow and that I've seen this culture grow. And to say that I may have played just a small hand in that, that's really what I'm proud of. give up. It's a tough one. If we could give advice to up and coming entrepreneurs, it's a tough question, but I think build your network, find good people to support you, and just don't give up. Keep pushing through. The biggest advice I would say would be to not worry about money and to worry about people as people first and form organic relationships with people that will yield opportunities. Um, some advice that I would give the up and coming entrepreneurs would be to not be afraid to ask for help. I Google Google is my best friend. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, I wear many hats in my role. Uh, like I said, from marketing to bar management to maybe just planning out what our goal is going to be over the next few years. So sometimes the big picture can feel really overwhelming, and just making sure to take a step back understand that you don't have to focus on the big picture all at once enjoy life a little bit here and there but you know realize that you have a goal in mind and that you're going to get there you just have to be patient and really rely on others for help what are we most excited for for may day i'm excited to see the turnout i want to see how many people come out what are you megan mm. <laughs> I'm excited to be done with the planning. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, it's really great. I tell you, um, Little Brother Brewing has been an awesome partner. Um, it's definitely been a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of details to work out. Um, but I think what I'm most excited to see, kind of like you, Brandon, is the turnout and just see people come and enjoy and have a really good time um, and learn about, you know why clean water is important to all of us if we don't already realize that. Uh, but that's what I'm excited about. Uh, I'm excited about the music. The music's always something that means a lot to me. Please make some noise for Sons of Paradise! Flashlights and false crimes More power than the atoms Splitting generally profiling Unavoidable like oil spilling Killing all the animals Trials of minorities All ending in majorities Tears for fears inciting more riots Than realizing that the hatred lives inside And makes it hard to be unbiased When you're coiled like the cobra Waiting for the perfect time to strike Most Just excited of course to bring in A band I've worked with a uh, really long time The Mantras To bring that into May Day In its second year And I'm also just most excited to continue to work with Carmen and all the good people Little Brother and at Jaw Works on creating an event that we hope to grow and we hope will continue to bond the city. Oh, the music, personally. I love music. That's it's kind of a secret passion of mine is music festivals and going to them. That's why I love being able to be a bar manager and being able to host these kinds of events is that I get to be able to pick the music that I want and host this event, be able to bring people in the city together to maybe bring them a music festival or something along that line or that genre and give them a little bit of the aspect of what's really fun about that. So May Day's going to be fun in that sense that I get to bring them a, I don't know, just a really fun, awesome day. What's my favorite beer from Little Brother? My favorite beer is probably the uh, Caravan Jam. 
Mine would be, I think it's the Caravan Jam, I think is what it's called. Civil Rest is my favorite beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little brothers. And it's kind of strange, but I don't actually drink beer, so I really like their red wine, and it doesn't matter which one, I'll just take whichever one. They have <laughs> uh, that's a hard answer right there. So my favorite beer from Little Brother, uh, I'd say Gustoza. That one has a soft place in my heart. I've always been an IPA girl. Uh, Gustoza is one of my favorites. It's just juicy, got a crisp, clean finish. By the time you're three quarters of the way done with your glass, you're already asking the bartender for another beer of it. My favorite type of music is rock and roll, and that umbrella is really, really large. So of course, I'm very rooted in psychedelic rock and roll, but I draw from so, so many influences. So ultimately, it's rock and roll, but I love bluegrass, I love country, I love hip hop. I span all across the board. I've enjoyed the most about Jamaican culture. Where we go is a small town, it's very rural, it's out of the you know busy cities and stuff like that. And everybody just has a great community feel. They're all, they're so supportive of each other. They support the whole community, it works as one. And it, we've just learned a lot there about what we can bring back here and do as far as making our community more sustainable and, and being able to work with itself. And the other thing I like about them is we talk about in the South here, we talk about Southern hospitality. And I feel like that's something that maybe we've lost a little bit of. And I go down to Jamaica and I realize what, what Southern hospitality really used to be because they're so hospitable and so loving and warm and friendly. And, and so that's just one of the things that it makes me realize kind of what we should do better here. Um, so my favorite part about brewing beer, I'm not a brewer myself, but I do get to witness a lot of the brewing aspects. The best part about it is being able to witness it from beginning to end and all the beautiful parts of it from the grain to the malt to the hops. Um, everything has a key play, playing part in that beer making process and it's really, under, it's really awesome to understand each uh, role of that ingredient and where it came from and the influence on the flavor and the style and the color. Um, so all that coming, to coming together, it just kind of goes hand in hand with cooking and baking that I also is another passion of mine. And being able to tell stories with those beers, uh, you know, meeting the malt supplier of that beer, the hop supplier of that beer, where that top, where those hops came from or where that malt came from, it's, it's all very uh, strong rooted and I think it's all very important, so it's really fun to talk about. Take upon yourself this ganja, because it's all we need. Trying to find some peace from our egos and greed. Wake from routine understanding, break down years of color boundary. Herbal price hunted for bounty, local grown by Shaman County, because it's all that we need. One of the biggest one of the biggest hardships to continue to address and overcome is logistics and keeping things organized. And it seems small, but as you continue to produce events, being able to delegate and assign roles to people and utilize people's strengths become, it, it becomes a really, really big obstacle. I don't know. Um, something I've learned about people since working in a brewery is that people are always really fascinated with the brewing side of things. Um, that's something that's really interesting no matter who you are, what age, whatever. It's kind of really cool to see that kind of tank, disc, you know, the com combobulation and everything else going on in the back with the steam and the smells. And people always seem to be really intrigued by that kind of thing. So that's what's really fun about also working in the brewery is being able to pass that knowledge on to others, whether it's a child, maybe you're inspiring that interest in them to learn more about baking or science and things like that, or just teaching people about, like I said, once again, where the ingredients are coming from. So people are always really interested in brewing and we're happy to teach them about that. How can people contribute to our organization? Um, there's a lot of different ways people can contribute. Um, so we do on our website, which is jowworksexperience.org. 
Um, there's a donate now button, so just go out there and click donate and go through PayPal to do that. You can also, if you want to dive right in, you can take a five day trip, week trip, 10 day trip, month trip. We'll take you down to Jamaica. You can do some work, hands on, have the vacation of a lifetime.